Welcome Wrench Army members! So if you remember last stream was quite the electrifying one and that is quite literally in fact uh, we got this light bulb glowing like a plasma globe. It had all the cool little streamers coming off and we found the right frequency to get it going. So I actually have an upgrade to this light bulb thanks to Dave Beck. And I wanna show you guys something really interesting that I discovered kind of later on after that stream. So of course, before we do that, I wanna remind everybody to hop on Discord because this stream was actually inspired by you guys. I put up polls on all the different platforms where you guys reside uh, to ask, how shall we display this plasma globe? We came up with a bunch of ideas, but eventually settled on some kind of dragon lamp, you know? And so how are we going to position the dragon and all of that? We had a poll of five different choices and one choice, one out. And I'll show you guys that in a bit. But of course, we have all of our usual gang. We have Dave Beck, of course, first one in, offering some relative emojis. Yes, they pretty much relate exactly to this stream. We got the plasma globe, the lightning, which can also represent plasma, uh, the dragon, which which we're going to be working on next stream uh chicken drumsticks because it is after all close to dinner we all hungry right and a ghost you know because we do need some kind of element of magic or supernatural to get all this stuff working and we have frozen mustache waving hi and kurt benning 99 hi there and so thanks for joining and i see you're on twitch Awesome. So let me show you the light bulb thing that we were uh, talking about. And again, this is courtesy of Dave Beck. This is so awesome. Look at the size of this. One of the things that I went to different hardware stores and I was trying to find the biggest incandescent, incandescent, light bulb that I could because it doesn't work with LED light bulbs. It's gotta be the old fashioned kind. And look, look how giant that is. That's like real, you go to a store and buy a plasma globe size. I am so excited, but I became even more excited when I noticed something inside. And I'm gonna try and give you guys the closest look before we, you know, start our whole foam build. We're back into foam miniatures, but for the best reason possible. So check this out and I'm gonna zoom you guys in, like totally check real close. I'm gonna try and get as close as possible. Here we go. Now, if you look at this light bulb, let me take it out of this thing. That way it has less to try and uh, focus on. And I'll hold it like that. Now you see two main elements coming up and it's holding a filament here in the middle. So if you remember when we started driving that high voltage through it, the plasma rays were originating from this point and that point and they were radiating out to our glass. And so we saw two main streamers. We kicked it up to about 12 volts. And of course we have our ignition coil stepping that up. Uh, and, and if we were to step it up further, then what happens is these streamers just become more violent. But at the end of the day, they're still originating from these two points. And compare that to this light bulb. And let's see if I can get this, all the lights are kind of being difficult but look how it still has those two points coming back, coming up, you know, one arm and the other arm, but instead of only have one wire connecting them, the wire makes like a semicircle and then there's like a bunch of like little legs connected. So it creates more connection nodes, I guess I'll call them, you know, whereas this one had only two connection nodes. Uh, on the right and on the left, this one has many of them. And so I didn't get a chance to test this, but my theory is that each of those connection nodes is gonna send out a plasma ray. And this is gonna make it look way, way cooler. Now, of course, we only drove ours using a 12 volt source. And I plan to use my laptop charger, which is 19 volts. So I think this is gonna look way, way cooler with 19. So we didn't do that last time only because I did have a weak point, which is where the barrel jack only handles up to 12. So I was kind of like afraid to go above and then fry the whole thing. Although I have a whole bag of them, so we can fry some stuff. We can afford to. So I can't wait to try this. And I didn't have it like set up. Uh, so for the next French Army stream, I'll have this set up. We'll do a quick test with this bulb and then we'll resume our, our lamp build. So I'm going to put this guy 
over here, and I'm gonna leave this out because look at this corrugated paper here. I'll give you guys a much better view. That's great for roofs, sides of buildings, for our miniatures. And I got a bunch of them. I got a bunch of them because of this light bulb. And so I'm gonna keep it and we'll see if maybe we can put it to some good use. So I'm glad I, I typically don't toss any of this stuff because these thinner cardboard boxes are also great for making roof shingles, you know, kind of like we did the last time, although we used, you know, TV dinner boxes and frozen food boxes. So anyways, for those of you not on Discord, and you should be, <laughs> if you're watching on Twitch, there's a link to it in the panel, you know, the, all those Twitch panels. And then if you're watching on YouTube, down in the description, there's a link to join Discord. Now, if you have trouble connecting your account to Discord and being recognized as a Wrench Army member, let me know. Just send me a private message on Discord and I'll help uh, connect you up. So... This is kind of what we decided and let's see if I can find it. Check out all these display options. So the one we settled on was the one on the very left. And the idea was to have some kind of rook type of castle with a dragon somewhere near our orb, you know, our plasma ball, like it wants it, or maybe it's, you know, trying to take it or protecting it. Uh, so one modification we were going to do with the design on the left is kind of move those wings. The way they are, they don't go over the bulb. Uh, one thing we want to be able to do is to change out the light bulb in case anything happens. This actually works with burnt out light bulbs. So the light bulb doesn't actually have to work, but we don't know if something happens with the filament or something where you stop getting those plasma rays. We want to be able to change the bulb out. So with the design all the way on the left, you can definitely do that. This is a product available on Amazon. And if you look at the different views, the wing never curves over the ball. It's just kind of like out here giving you plenty of clearance. But what one of you guys pointed out was that the wing covers the whole, and the dragon body, the whole back of the bulb, so you don't get any visibility for your plasma ball that way. So we're gonna use this general dragon, but maybe shape it slightly different so it's not getting in the way of the bulb. And then I started to get online, like I do, and research rook shapes. You know, how tall do we want this thing? Do we want it to have any windows? How decorative do we want it? Do we want it just simple like that? Just just dragging on the rook with the plasma ball and that's it. And, oh, you know us, you know, this never happens, you know? So of course we got to step it up a notch. And I started thinking of dragons and like uh, mystical orbs and things like that. And what's the first thing you think of? Well, wizards, you know, I'm thinking like Lord of the Rings, Gandalf the White, Gandalf the Grey. Hey, why not have both of them going on at the same time? So I thought instead of a rook style castle, and we literally just built a castle, the Frankenstein castle, why don't we kind of shift this and do a very cool like wizard type castle build and maybe we can even find a little wizard that is fighting the dragon and we can scorch parts of this castle do some cool fire effects using both some of the uh, stuffing that I have left over from the fart detector project and our lightning detector project uh, we can do some cool black paint and led smoking type effects and then you can use hot glue twirl them in ways to create fires so we can have all kinds of like fires going on. There's a big battle going on between this dragon and this wizard. But one of the things we don't want to do is make this lamp so huge that it like takes up the table. You know, typical Rachel style. We just go way too big with this. So finding a way to kind of create the scene in a very compact way. So how do we display this light bulb? And uh, Dave Beck is saying, Doctor Who showed me where to get that bulb. Probably, I, I actually believe that one because I did not find them that big. Of course, I found the run of the mill household ones. And then I found some that were like a little bit bigger, but not like that. And I kept putting it large, you know, light bulb, giant light bulb, 12 inch light bulb, six inch light bulb, like all these kinds of terms. I just didn't, I didn't get the great, um, results. I even tried, but big, you know, like all kinds of words trying to get that to, to show up. So I had this piece of three inch PVC pipe lying around and I'm like, Hmm, that kind of looks like a tower. I think we can work with this. Right. And so this is 12 inches in length might be a little tall, but I think once we put some landscaping down here, it'll probably help shrink 
the look of it a little bit. So, you know, we would put maybe our base up here and it's okay that it's a little bit bigger because I was thinking of having, uh, you know, like in our design here, I love the one all the way on the right. That's my absolute favorite one there because I love those little huts that are attached to it. They're very like the Hobbit, you know, that's what it reminds me of. So I'm going to try and build this thing, but instead of the roof, you know, because we need to put our, our light bulb here. Uh, instead of that, we'll go back to kind of the rook type of roof. And so it'll have like almost like fingers, you know, holding the uh, orb, you know. And so it won't be touching the glass. It'll be very close to it. So it'll allow us to just change out the light bulb anytime we need. Because this is taller, we can wrap the dragon you know, around it a little bit lower than the bulb so the bulb can shine. I mean, this was like the whole point of the project was to build a, uh, you know, a plasma ball. So we don't want to cover it up. So we'll have our, you know, dragon here. Then somehow there needs to be a wizard somewhere that will fight this dragon. And we're going to be creating, you know, when a wizard does like the beam, like, you know, like that. And light comes out of their hands. And, you know, so it can be that and the dragon breathing fire out. And there's a big explosion in between the two of them. And there's a very cool way to, to do that. And we're going to do it using glue sticks to act like a fiber optic cable to travel that light down. Uh, a lot of polyfill and painting techniques. So that's going to be a fun one because I haven't done that in a while. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so anyways, we have this castle. And I thought, looking at these designs here, uh, you have especially the one there in the middle. So the one in the middle, what I like about it, it, it has that little jutting out thing with the little outpost, I guess, uh, on the side. So what I like about it is that it makes that pretty compact but it's still not wizardy enough. And, you know, because it is attached to the ground. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we have like a floating tower and it just looks like it's floating? Because after all, he's a wizard. Like, you know, he levitated this thing off the ground. So I came up with this idea. Using a, a stick, you know, from our barbecue picnic table build, I had this left over and I thought, how can we levitate like a small little tower right next to it? So I drilled kind of a, a slot here and let's see if this uh, angle here is better, better. So I drilled this slot where we can stick like a support stick and I drilled a complementary slot in the back where probably should have taken, should have taken that off sooner. And I'm just going to turn this towards me so I can actually see it. And I still have to fine tune these holes. So I'm going to try and put it in this way and see what happens there we go so we'll just mount that flush right there use some hot glue so we have kind of a support now of course this is way too long we don't want a lamp this this much you know we'll probably like make it much much shorter something like you know pretend this isn't here uh, but maybe something like that and I had some two inch PVC lying around now I don't know how long I want this to be do we want it to be an actual uh, you know, cylinder type of thing, like a steeple with an actual roof on it? Or do we like this kind of outhouse situation a little bit better? Obviously, that bridge connecting the outhouse to the main uh, tower there won't be there. I have another idea for that because obviously we have to, <laughs> wrong one, we have to hide this somehow because it's like, obviously, it's like, it's connected. It's, it, it ain't floating, right? It's, it's connected. It's pretty obvious. So, uh, something like this and we'll weight it properly. I think once we put the dragon on this side, it won't, you know, do that kind of thing. And imagine it being shorter, you know, because we want the plasma ball to kind of have its own space, its own real estate, right? So I thought one cool thing to do, and maybe we can extend it just a little bit, is have like roots coming out the, the bottom here, somehow built like a little dirt mound as if this thing was like levitated off the ground and we can build maybe the outhouse might be a good idea so you get more visibility of the wizard 
And for this, we can kind of start a bridge and it crumbled. And instead, maybe the wizard just tied a couple ropes together and we can put some scary slats, kind of like Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom, where there's that one scene where they have to go across a really rickety bridge and the, the slats are all falling. So that's going to trick the eye into thinking this is more floating. The other idea I had was to use a small like barbecue skewer or something to hold it. But depending on how much weight we put, it starts to kind of teeter totter or when you anytime you move the lamp, it's going to like wiggle. So I thought this is a much more sturdy way to do it. And once we add roots, we kind of change the shape of, you know, this connection. I think we can fool the eye into thinking this thing's actually levitating. So that's going to be a cool challenge. And then figuring out how far we want it. But I figure the wizard can be in this contraption, whether it be another tower or a little outhouse you know, thing like we have going on here in the middle picture, um, he can uh, be there and be, you know, pulsing his power, whatever, you know, his, his, his power beam towards the dragon and the dragon can likewise be blowing fire at the same time and it has a collision in the middle. So there's like a little battle scene going on kind of down here, allowing the plasma globe to kind of have its, its thing. But at the same time, we'll put a whole bunch of just fire going on because this battle has been going on you know so we can put singe marks and things and that'll kind of help make this project a lot different than the um the frankenstein one that we just did with that foam castle so we're going to be using a lot more different techniques than we did with that because this is a much bigger bigger build uh, so the banquet is saying hello why hello and welcome we are building a very cool wizard versus dragon battle lamp and of course, the star of this lamp is a light bulb that we converted into a plasma globe. And we did that last stream. So you get all those cool streaks uh, that you would get with a normal plasma globe. And we use an ignition coil to really drive that uh, voltage. Uh, and so we're going to be hiding that somewhere in here. So anyways, I'm going to pull this apart because I think we're going to work on this big column first and start figuring things out on there and then we'll figure this out. But do give your idea for this section. Do you want it to be like a, a cylinder and we can kind of like make holes in it as if parts of it have completely been blown off by the dragon uh, or by the wizard, you know, himself. Sometimes those things ricochet, you know, it's like Dragon Ball Z when, you know, they send out the power ball and it hit something and ricocheted. So the wizard might have made some mistakes. <laughs> or if you guys prefer something like an outhouse like this, and we can uh, dilapidate parts of the roof, uh, have fires going on on that little roof there, uh, like it's, you know, it seems some, some, you know, action. And one of the things I like about these designs is the amount of wood. You know, it's, it's very The Hobbit, you know, and, and very wizardy and mystical and all that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about this project. Uh, and of course, we're going to have LEDs inside. And I have an idea for that. And the Penguin is loving my shirt, of course, Doctor Who. Haven't worn this one in a while. So as I was like going through my shirt options, I was like, Transformers, Gremlins, um, Beetlejuice, you name it. I was like, Doctor Who? I have not done that one in a while. So, of course, Dave also said, cool, wizard springboard. Yes, you know, pretty much. Yeah, he can like dive into his personal moat, you know, anytime he wants to go swimming, except when it's on fire, you know, as, as, as it will be. So anyways, for those of you joining right now, this is a three inch PVC pipe and it is 12 inches high. And so I went ahead and used that design, uh, this one here all the way on the right. And I noticed that there are three huts. Now, because we're going to put that dilapidated bridge, I decided to eliminate one of the huts. So I kept the big hut on the left and the littler hut all the way up at the top and I eliminated that one kind of on the right side because that's where we're gonna put our dilapidated bridge to the floating tower uh, and then also what I like about this design is that little entrance with the boards that have been broken off now of course a wizard live here he don't need no steps you know he can just like float teleport do what he wants to do so I thought that was kind of cool another element is that we can use that for a battle scene we can just set that thing on fire and you know now no one can get in and out unless you have magical powers so that's actually right here and then I noticed there was a little window here 
Uh, and then we have our set of windows up here, just like in the picture. Here is my large hut. And you'll notice that I just kind of like outlined it. And then I'll give you guys a better uh, view. Here, of course, is where we're going to kind of hide our, our stick, you know, just to give it leverage to hold the tower. And then you'll see like a little hole. Like, what the heck is that? Well, you know we can't have windows without LEDs, right? You know, and so there's a whole bunch of way we've done flame effects and ambient effects in the past. We've used LED strips, which we control with Arduino. We have done just basic Arduino code with five millimeter little LED bulbs. But for this one, I want to try and avoid an Arduino because we have that whole 555 timer thing going already. I want to condense it down into... A little board uh, something like this you know maybe I can fit it into something like this and then he can fit in here pretty easily you know either on the side or maybe he can kind of go in like that you know we'll figure that out you know that's that's for a future stream but I just wanted to make sure it can fit you know that's it's before we build the whole thing and be like oh the whole purpose of building this was to hide the electronics and now we can't so I'm gonna put this aside this is a project for another stream where we'll condense it down uh, and stick it in here and then of course we'll have a wire that main high voltage wire going up and illuminating our light bulb at the top but I figure we can start building out the huts which are the main elements and we won't do the roofs just yet so I can add in my flickering LEDs and I think this time I'm going to do them in a totally different way beginner friendly way which is that they make those LEDs already with a flickering effect and you can get yellow orange red I think I'm going to get all you know just so we can have some cool fire and have multiple type of shades going on for our fire effects and all you have to do is wire them and power them and they flicker so I think I'm going to go you know with that route and make our lives super easy so we don't have a whole other microcontroller to put in here even if we go with the nano uh, that's still a whole other one we got to do so that's the route I'm taking uh, with that unless you guys have you know any better ideas so let's get started trying to figure this out and we're going to do this a little bit differently than we did our original Frankenstein castle build which was predominantly done with foam core board and this is uh, stuff I got at the dollar store all this for a dollar I was able to build that entire Frankenstein castle as you can see the cutout here for a buck well, less than a buck because I got all this left over, right? So we're going to be using a little bit of this for certain details. And then we're going to be using like purple board for the rest of the details. And it just occurred to me that I need a little more and it's like literally right there. So follow me over here. I am just going to grab a board to be able to show it to you guys. So this is what it looks like. It's half an inch. And so we're going to be cutting this down and I like to remove this shiny sticker stuff, you know, on the side. And what we're going to be doing is using that castle, the one all the way on the right, as an example. But I actually like the rock work of the one in the middle. I love those little, little rocks. So I think I'm going to use the rock design of that one and the shape you know, of the one on the right. And we're gonna mash these two together. Now, one of the things that I notice on both of them is that the base is fatter than the top. And the top kind of ever so gradually becomes a smaller diameter. So I figure we can definitely do this with this in a couple different ways. So I will bring to you some of my rock samples that I've done here. And I'm gonna back you guys out just a little bit, or maybe not, not just yet, not just yet. So I started to individually cut some rocks and some of them are rather big before I discovered that castle with the little rocks, you know, so some of these I am going to cut down and I started to texture them uh, just with a craft knife, you know, the blunt end of a craft knife. You don't want to use the sharp end because it creates these very exacto knife looking cuts and it's like, I know what you're trying to do. You just cut some squares out and you're saying that they're bricks. Uh, and so what we're going to do is individually cover our tube with these now luckily this project is not so big where this is like an impossible task but if you were doing an entire tabletop gaming type of scene that's a lot of bricks a lot of bricks uh, and so I'll show you how I did uh, some of these bricks uh, a little bit later because I'm not I'm, we're probably not going to get to bricking today uh, or brick laying today uh, we have many professions you know in this stream from uh 
building, building, you know, building buildings to brick laying to all kinds of things. So I'm just putting this light bulb where I won't smash it, step on it, or, you know, have it roll off the table. So in order to build our hut here, let's start with the biggest hut. Let's just get that one out of the way. And so taking uh, one more look, and I'm just going to flash back and forth a lot. It looks, it, the building looks like a octagon you know, if you count the sides. And of course, if you count the sides that are missing that supposedly go into the building, this thing is definitely an octagon of which we probably only need five sides for our project. You know, we don't need to build what can't be seen. So five sides. And so what I already went ahead and did was from that foam core board, uh, you'll notice that one side still has the black backing. I've removed the backing from this side so we can texturize it. It's very difficult to texturize. Now, I like to leave the black backing on the one side because it gives it strength. It gives it a little bit of strength. After all, it's a dollar store foam core board. So we do want to give it a little bit of strength. Uh, but if you're doing rocks or other textures, you can remove that. And what I like about the dollar store version versus others is that this backing comes off way easy. Like some of the more expensive one, you gotta like really work at it and pick at it. Uh, so I've already pre-cut a couple options here. Oh, this one's got some backing on it there. And let's see if the height, let me make sure these are all part of the same group. Yes, they are. And let's see the height here. This is just kind of general. It doesn't have to be, you know, 100%, especially since I want this guy a little bit taller. So I think I'm going to do a little bit like this. And he's looking pretty good, I think. I will just shorten them a hair. So let me grab my craft knife here and just kind of give it a haircut, something like that. And the nice thing with these is that they don't really have, the cuts on these don't have to be that straight because we're gonna be able to cheat just a little bit here. And I'll show you guys what I mean with these towers. You can see that the seams where we're gonna join these all have wood on them. So it's okay if one's like a little bit shorter or you, know, you didn't bevel the edge quite right, which in my case, I didn't bevel the edges at all. They're just kind of like all over the place. And I'm going to keep these pieces right here because they're going to make some really great bricks. So let me continue just, to, you know, giving these guys a little bit of a, a haircut. And the roof should cover any kind of imperfections that we got going on here. So I'm not too worried. So step one is building some kind of octagon. And I'm already getting hot glue everywhere, which is a good sign. It means we're, we're ready to go. So let me just try and grab this off of here so it fits into our, our slot that, that I made earlier. So, and of course, these projects are always moving goalposts. So if you have cool ideas you wanna include, I always try and include them, uh, you know, as best I can. Uh, so let's see here. The one here has to be straight like that, right? So that kind of gives us, you know, that idea. And then something like this and something like this. I think that's about, this will connect this edge right here where I have my fingers. We'll hot glue to the canister or you know, our PVC. And then something like this and something like this. And yeah, this looks awesome, right? <laughs> Not at all. All right, let's see if I can hold this all. Yeah, so I think we'll be good. See, something like that. You know, and people can assume maybe we open it up just a little bit so it looks more uh, octagonal. Uh, so yes, as you can see, that looked awesome. <laughs> Not at all. So let's start, uh, you know, let's start this process. I'm going to use some hot glue and maybe bring you guys in slightly closer, ever so slightly. And... Start the hot glue process. Now with this, because I don't care about the seams, we don't have to worry too much about things looking good. They don't have to look good. And I'm gonna try and work somewhat quick here, um, only because I'd like to be able to change the shape a little bit, like bend it if I have to. All right, something like that. And 
I forgot to do something really important, but we're just going to keep going and we'll try and do it later. Which is texturing. It is so much easier to do the texturing, um, you know, before. Ah, it's full of like little glue wispies before we put it together. But we're pros. The, uh, you know, the Frankenstein castle build made us pros. So I think we'll, we'll be okay. All right, that looks kind of even. Let me maybe move this guy here and fill this gap here with glue. Oh no! Oh, that's hot. Who would have thought hot glue is hot? <laughs> All right, something like that. So that's somewhat of an octagon except you know we would need well we got five sides we would need two more sides somehow so maybe it really does need to open up just a little bit more something like that there it doesn't have to be like mathematically uh, precise just something that will fit in here and that actually hugs it really really well so I'm gonna leave that as is even though it's not that perfect hexagonal shape you know I, I think it uh, it does its thing so a couple things that I you know jump the gun on is it's a lot easier to cut your windows out when this thing is not you know glued together and add our texturing so I'm gonna put this aside until the glue super you know cures and then we'll come back to it uh, in a little bit and then we'll we'll continue but I'm just taking one last look making sure I like the look of that and yeah I think I do it's tough to be kind of uh, you know precise with with these things because to be anatomically correct uh, also I noticed even before cutting these out is the skinniness of each side of the octagon it's pretty skinny on here and in order to get a true octagon on this project, I would have had to cut these things way, way thinner. But it starts to become difficult to see detail when things get so, so, so tiny. So I think I like the thicker panels a little bit better. You'll be able to see the wood detail, the stucco detail, you know, all that. And we'll make the other one, you know, a lot more skinny, you know, skinny panel if we have to. So I'm going to let this guy kind of do its thang there and we'll move on to this guy. And this time I will not forget, you know, the situation. And for this, check these out. I think I've already learned my lesson and I'm going to thin them out just a little bit because he is high up. The details are a little bit smaller. So I'll just kind of cut one. Uh, and again, straightness doesn't really matter. Uh, which is great you know usually you have to be pretty precise when you are going to see the seams and in which case we're not we're going to have some of that nice wood covering the seams so i'm going to go ahead and cut maybe about five of these and those of you that have been you know watching these for a while know that i don't measure much I find that the projects turn out a lot more artistic when they kind of have just natural, uh, you know, uh, natural curves, natural, you know, things kind of wrong. Except, you know, if you're doing something that needs to be really precise, then yeah, you know, we, we do measure, especially like with woodworking. You don't want a crooked table. That's not going to help anybody. But for some of these uh, model, you know, model making, I do like to kind of keep them know we try and adhere to some kind of geometry but it doesn't have to be perfect so now that I've thinned these out these all went on Jenny Craig and look at how they come out it worked they went on Jenny Craig diet and they come out all slim now will they keep the weight off that is yet to be determined now we're not gonna glue these let me look at what the details are on our towers so every other one has a window so with the one on the very top the windows are all at the same level whereas that big one you can see there's like a window kind of towards the top of a panel and a window in the middle of the panel so we'll figure that out in a little bit but let's uh, go ahead and cut out three windows 
on this thing. So in order to help us out, I'm gonna use this Sharpie just to kind of give us a, a baseline. And I'll move this kind of out of the way here. And let's figure this out. I'll pick kind of a fatter panel. These two are kind of fat and this one's kind of fat. So we'll, we'll cut them out on these guys. So let's see, where were the windows again? I already forgot. All right, so they're kind of towards the top because there's that wood band that goes uh, in the middle there. So I'll put them kind of here and they're curved, something like that. Go ahead and cut them out. Now, when you initially cut these out, trust me, they do not have to be super, super perfect because we're actually gonna be using more foam detail on them and that's where we really get the shape. So we're just kind of like, see how I didn't measure height? I mean, they're all kind of like mostly there. So as long as we get them mostly there, we'll be okay. This is my smaller craft knife, so I'm gonna go in and start and typically you want one that's really sharp that you don't have to saw so you don't get those jagged edges although making turns sometimes it's a little bit easier to to saw oh and I have that backing panel so I want to start to poke through that backing panel now you can also heat up a nail and use it as a poker uh, to get yourself started. There are foam uh, cutting kits that use heat and wire. I have one actually, but I don't know what it is. I always go back to just like hand cutting. There's just something about it that it's almost like the heated wire moves faster than I do. And then you've cut off something that you don't want to cut off and you're like, no, and it's tough to kind of put it back on once it's cut off. So we got our little window there. He's looking all good. Dare I say he is looking super cute. <laughs> and so I'm cutting out my other Hobbit window here. Although Hobbit windows are perfectly round. But we'll just uh, keep these kind of like wizardy. After all, we're not Hobbits. We're, we're Gandalf, the white and the gray. So we're, we're going to need both of him in order to fight our dragon. So both Gandalfs will be on call. So I forgot that this is not my sharpest blade because I use duller blades to cut rocks. And so anytime a blade starts to dull, I keep it, you know, and I'll show you in a little bit how great they are for making um, very realistic rock textures uh, rather than the super sharp knives. It's like the only time you don't want a super sharp uh, exacto knife. Uh, and then David Beck is saying, Hobbits don't measure, so it looks more organic. You know what? You're right. If you watch the Hobbit movie, it's it's all their little uh, grassy roofs. And that's one thing I wanted to do with this uh, wizard castle that neither of those pictures show is add a lot of organic elements to it, just like, you know, the Hobbit movie. Uh, and I know there's other wizards, you know, out there, but for whatever reason, uh, Gandalf is kind of the, the first one I think of. So the other challenge is finding a wizard, you know, action figure, a little doll or something. Uh, so I'll go and see if uh, we can find one that, now let me not, not glue these out of order, because that is so typical where I'll go like this and be like, oh, guys. All right, so we're gonna do kind of the same thing where I'm gonna work kind of quickly so I have room to, uh, to move around. Don't want to go too steep with the angle. That might be a little steep, but oh, I'm putting the wrong side. Look at that. Hurry. I took the one with the window and I put the glue on the wrong side. There we go. And then he can, ow, 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 ow. He can go here. There we go. I saved it. I saved the day now. Let's not put the glue on the wrong side. Oh, and I forgot to texture it again. Oh my gosh. My good old fashioned aluminum foil, but we'll get to that. We should be good. We're not gonna add too, too much texture because this is gonna be stucco. And I'm gonna move this out of the way so I stop burning myself. And now this guy's a little more crooked, but we'll see if we can de-crooked him. 
the crooked eyes him and something like that that's looking pretty pretty good maybe instead of uh, octagon maybe ours will be hexagons nothing wrong with that the wizard's saving money I mean his his castle is being obliterated by this dragon every weekend he's like I don't got no money for bills to pay for repairs so instead of an octagon he went with a, a hexagon because it's it's so much cheaper to maintain so that's our our little hexagon guy there and I think you know he's looking pretty good so let me just fix any type of like this wall's leaning a little bit and now that I like that shape I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit more glue to these seams to sturdy it up like that uh, normally uh, you wouldn't be adding glue on this side because you know these hideous seams but luckily we're going to be covering them with wood so we don't have to worry too much all right so we got two uh, used to be octagons but now they are hexagons we just kind of made a, a budgetary decision which i'm sure that the the wizard will appreciate since this uh, dragon is just up in the bills so much. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, just add a little bit more. Let me see if I can bend this now that we're going with a hexagon, just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is hold it uh, with pressure while I glue, and then let that glue set with our pressure in place. And then that should change the shape of it a little bit for us here and where was I did I do this ow yes I did best way to tell uh, burn yourself <laughs> all right so we have our new hexagon yes so if you are an interior designer, wizards, I'm talking to all the wizards out there, you definitely want to hire Rachel. She will save you a ton of money by botching up the build and then just, you know, changing it to make it cheaper for you. The wizard's like, I thought I ordered a, a octagon, you know, little hut thing. And I said, but look at all the money I saved you by just using six walls instead of eight. So I'm just holding this with pressure until the glue dries. And you can almost imagine in your head, you would just need another piece of foam right here and we'd be good, right? So crisis averted, except now I gotta try and cut windows into this thing. So let's see, oh, still wants to uh, open up a little bit on us. I'm gonna hold it a little bit and let's start looking at this guy. And we can start adding some of our texture and of course I have a bunch of popsicle sticks you can use popsicle sticks coffee stirring sticks they also have craft wood that you can use in shapes of squares and things like that because check out these little huts uh, on the picture all the way on the right they're being supported by these wooden planks and so we're going to be using similar wooden planks that we're going to make out of popsicle sticks but then there are some cross beams underneath that are square in shape uh, so I can either layer up some popsicle sticks and you know do it that way but I think I'm gonna go out and actually get squares they paint up much better when you don't because you can see the layers it's like you just glued a whole bunch of popsicle sticks together to create a square uh, so we don't we don't want to do that like you know I'll easily downgrade from an octagon to a hexagon but there's a line I won't cross you know I'm not gonna glue two popsicle sticks together so I'll run out and grab that, but we can certainly get the other planks going, the support planks. We can get all of those little wooden details on our huts. So the objective is if we can get a lot of our huts done, that little entrance, I, I can start to stoning it, you know, on my own or start the stoning process and then finish it. I can show you how I've cut out some of the stones. And another design feature that I really like is at the very top of that tower on your right, you can see that the windows are flush with the outer wall. I actually like the design of the one in the middle where the windows are recessed in and that stone kind of comes out to a much bigger diameter thing on top. 
And that's gonna be perfect actually for our light bulb stand. So I'm like, I could definitely use this design. So we're, we're doing a whole bunch of design mashing here. And please do let me know if you want like a, a tower floating, or if you want like a little outhouse thing like this floating or some kind of cool design. Either case, we're gonna make it look pretty dilapidated and burned up from the fire. So yes, after holding that for a while, it finally glued. So you can almost imagine, you know, had I glued this guy on this side, we got it pretty, pretty perfect. Look at that, yeah. And this guy perhaps is a little bit closed in. Let's see if I can uh, widen it. Widening it, widening it is always a little easier than, uh, you know, trying to, to tighten it. So now let's add our effects that I should have added, you know, before. I glued these things together. And for stucco, I think what I'm gonna do is just take, I'm gonna start by maybe taking, you know, this, this wire brush. But usually I use foil for stone. It creates just the coolest stone texture. And, you know, obviously another way to create a stone texture is to use actual stone. And I'm not talking about the smooth kind of river stones that a lot of us have for outdoor decor. But if you have any sharp, jagged, like pebbles, rocks, uh, those are great. Just press them in just like I'm doing with this. And see, you can already start seeing some texture. And I'll bring you guys in. This is the texture cam. And so it looks very subtle, but when you start to, to paint this and you start to use some acrylic washes, all that does is just start to seep into all those little, you know, crevices. And so on top of that, so it already looks kind of stucco. And uh, for rocks, we would be adding more rips and tears, but I think I'm gonna just add more divots, you know, kind of like stucco. There's a reason why stucco needs to be power washed all the time. There's all this like, you know, the texture where dirt likes to get in and sit around. Now you can already see why this would have been much easier to do with it not being attached. So there's some texture there. And let's do the same thing here. I kind of like the combo of the aluminum foil. And uh, wire brush. This is also great for creating wood you know, wood, uh, if you just drag it across real hard, it creates these streaks that then it makes it much easier to paint your, your foam to look like wood. Although I like to use the wood popsicles anytime I can, but sometimes you wanna do like a curved archway out of uh, wood popsicle sticks, that's a little tough, you know? So in that instance, I like to substitute foam and then just use that technique. So, Another great uh, technique for making wood really stand out is to use hot glue on, uh, on the uh, popsicle sticks and drag some hot glue across it. It creates stripes on it, uh, which when you paint it, looks like grain on a piece of wood and it accentuates it that much more. So always a good thing. I'm actually kind of excited to do some of this stucco work because with our Castle Frankenstein, it was all stone, all stone, uh, but different painting techniques for our stone. So that was kind of cool. And we made some very cool flocking and, and that was like probably one of my favorite streams. So I'm looking forward to doing this, but this one's gonna go even further with the earthier you know, type of things. Uh, so with uh, our Castle Frankenstein, it was up on a very rocky cliff nothing living up there. It was just very desolate and, you know, not a single little flower, a mountain flower. And so something like this, you know, we're kind of in an enchanted forest. And so we kind of want to make this look like that. And so now we've got some nice stucco. And when we paint this, it's going to look awesome. So that's textured. I'm going to put him aside and let's try and cut the windows on this thing. And let me remind myself how the windows go. So the window in the front facing pane is kind of in the middle. And then there's a window on kind of the right that's up top. And I'm going to imagine that there's a matching window on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And whoop, I got too much sawdust on my iPad. 
So just to give me a guide, I'm gonna go ahead and just draw something real, real briefly here. So this is our front facing window and this one was the one that was kind of in the middle here. So he was kind of like here. Might be kind of big, but maybe something like that. And then that got skipped. And then this guy right here was at the very top. But I am wondering. No, oh, no, you'll still be able to see him up here. I thought that perhaps he would be covered and you wouldn't even see the window anyways. Uh, which I've done before. Oh yeah, I've put windows on all kind of cool places. And then I'm like, oh no, it gets covered by something, you know, or it has to go behind a wall and I lose my window. So this window was kind of at the top here. So we'll kind of go like this with him. And I'm gonna imagine, skip one, skip one, and this guy will, will put him at the top as well. So. Is that kind of like that's a thumb and that's a thumb's worth all right it's it's close enough when you can't see both windows in the same view when you're holding an object it's okay if they're like not like level you know super super level um it's when you can see two windows you know if we were to put two you know, a window here and a window here, you definitely want to make sure they're level because you can see them at the same time. But when you got to do this type of business, like no one memorizes that well. And if they do, listen, props, props to them. So let's uh, get cutting here before we add the texture. I'm going to start with the center one since I have more support. And I'm going to go back to my little guy here both with okay blades, maybe not the sharpest, but we're gonna be happy they're not in a little bit here. <laughs> the window's like, I don't wanna leave. I wanna be part of the project. Don't remove me like a loose tooth. There we go, you wiggle it around until it comes out. And here we go with this one. And I got my finger in the way, which is exactly where I want it. No, just kidding, where I don't want it. All right, doing things kind of out of order, but worst thing, we just gotta, you know, maybe glue it back together again if it collapses, but it's doing pretty well. And we're rocking through these windows. One more window to rock through. And we got our two huts then, pretty much mocked up and we can glue them in place and then start on the entrance to our tower and I figured it'd be much easier to get these huts done first rather than stone the entire thing and then have to pick the stone out because you know it turns out your hut doesn't quite fit you know in the area that you thought it would so I figure we get these huts on minus the roofs uh, so I can get in here and put, uh, you know, put little LEDs and stuff in here. And then uh, it'll be much easier. We can just meet the rock right up to the edge of it. So I think I'll make my life a ton easier doing it that way. So let's start adding these uh, stucco effects. pretty good nice crumpled and with the foil you definitely want to use the thicker foil uh, rather than the like really cheap thin foil uh, it gives you much better marks the foil just crumbles way too much and you get a little bit of a you know a little bit but not a whole heck of a lot and I'm just gonna kind of reinforce the texture I tell it I mean business. It's like, no, I really want you to look like stucco. I'm not messing around here. <laughs> so there's our little stucco, and I'm going to do the same thing on all the panels. So with the Frankenstein Castle build, we pretty much just use the foil to create just about all of our textures because we were working with just rock. <laughs> and this uh, foam core is really forgiving, so meaning pliable is, I guess, what I mean. So it really does take all of the you know the little textures that you put in 
versus this, you know, this stuff right here, you gotta work a little bit harder to get the texture going. And we'll see that in just a little bit here. And get our window, our central window. And I can't say that this uh, wizard tower and all these little huts will be totally proportionate. You know, perhaps you'll have to shrink yourself like Alice in Wonderland style, you know, or Willy Wonka style in one room and then become a giant uh, in the other room. But heck, he's a wizard. Uh, honestly, if he can't master shrinking and become embigifying himself, well, there's no way he's going to stand any chance against the dragon. So get to working on that, Mr. Wizard. So for the wizard, I was saying we can buy a pre-made wizard. You know, if we can find one the right size that's not too big or like really, really tiny where you can't see him. Uh, and if he doesn't have like an arm like outstretched like that, like he's sending out like an energy beam, we can certainly made one, make one out of clay or foam and we can kind of like dremel off his other arm or something or just hide it under cloth. Uh, so you, you know, don't see that it's there. Or we can make kind of our own wizard using dowels and just like round uh, round balls, you know, out of foil. And then you clay it, paint it, and make him look like a wizard. So a couple different ways to attack our, our wizard build if we can't find a pre-made wizard. And our final panel. Yes. Hopefully the wizard will like what I've done with his abode. He's hired Rachel Designing Services. He should have uh, taken a clue when a lot of my design elements come from the dollar store. Or maybe he's uh, thrifty as well. All right, that's looking pretty good. And the nice thing, we don't have to worry about this atrocity going on in between the panels because they're all going to be hidden. So now that we have those done, let's work before we glue them on. Uh, that way we're not like rolling this around and smushing our I'm just gonna back you guys up just a little bit once we have the huts on like if I want to lay this down it's gonna be pretty tough so I figure we get all of our big stick out elements done first uh, and then we'll start gluing them on onto here it's gonna look super cool so the hut let me see what we got going on for his entrance uh, and Dave Beck is saying, maybe an acrylic springboard substitution. That might be more floaty. Hmm. Maybe. Because then you can see through the acrylic. My worry with the barbecue skewer is that even if you hide it with roots and, and all that, it's, it's a barbecue skewer. Like, you know, people can figure that one out. But some kind of plexi or acrylic springboard or acrylic tube might be interesting and we can find like a, a nice kind of thin one i'm gonna be on the lookout for that i like that idea so uh our little guy here i'm gonna see if i can use some leftover bits and let's see maybe something like this and the roof will be here and so i think I always like to cut it just a tad longer. You know, something like that. Yep. And what are the dimensions of said tower? So the sides are very short and it's got like a nice entrance. So let's do the opening first and then we'll figure out the, the sides. So this will actually be our opening then. It's, it's looking pretty good. It's the right width. So that'll be our opening. So the wizard's got to be real tiny to come in here, but then real big to live up here. But those are wizard problems. <laughs> so now I'm going to do the same thing. And here's kind of a convenient piece. And I'm going to go ahead and use him. He's pretty much almost there, but we'll just do that. And then maybe something like that. Because if you notice, the sides are very short. So your door doesn't jut out. Your like, little wizard situation doesn't jut out very much. Your entrance door. So I have something like, like this going on. 
and I'm just gonna match this up with something. Do I have anything? Ooh, here's something. Let me just kind of match him up a bit. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Let me just even out this belly. See, he's got a bit of a belly there. And I'll bring you in a little closer. Right there, we got a hump. We're gonna put him on Jenny Craig. And there we go. Little workout program. Let me move this guy out of the way because I am gonna get confused. So all we're making is a perfect square. So this one's a, a much easier one. And again, uh, side seams don't really matter for this one. So I think I'll just do this. Oh no, I forgot to texture it, but it's too late. And it wasn't so bad texturing it, you know, post, post gluing. So we'll go like that and like that. Was this the piece? I think so. It looks pretty correct. Oh, we got cave in. Got a cave in on the side. Nice. Now, as that glues, it looks like maybe this little side here needs to be cut a little bit shorter. Doesn't one leg look longer than the other leg? I think so. But we'll let them glue and then we'll deal with it. All right, so the other thing to look at is what kind of hex shaped door should we do? Let's get some ideas. They all use kind of like this, the, the rounded top, the arched top. So I think we'll, we'll go with that and we'll draw one of those out. And this has a nice tall door, so we'll do that. I like the wood, you know, where the roof comes up, there's kind of like wood in between the two roof uh, sides. So we'll definitely imitate that in our build. So, now that this thing is sitting a little bit better, he is sitting pretty good, so I may just leave him. And let's draw kind of as a guide our arched uh, door situation. How far up from the, all right, so it pretty much goes all the way down. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do this. That's a hairy looking door. <laughs> and our entrance seems like it's a little bit taller. Yes, it's definitely taller than the one they have, but I like the one we have. Ours is better with the, our hairy entrance right there. <laughs> Cut him out. Use this guy over here, the thinner, little thinner blade. I'm gonna cut towards my thumb. It's coming right at me. There we go. Some of these little doors can be some tough details, but we'll we'll do it. We'll do it. We have the technology. Namely foam. There we go. Yeah, from hairy door to like, that's a pretty smooth cutout. So looking good. And I love keeping all these little pieces. They're great for making rubble and that sort of thing. So yeah, we'll definitely keep those. I'm just gonna push them aside. And here's our door. So I think we can start to glue stuff places. Let me just get this guy a little bit better situated. And Dave Beck is saying, Harry, as in Harry Potter, darn straight, <laughs> might as well be. <laughs> as I was drawing it, I was like, what the heck is going on with all these little lines? I'm just gonna hold this in place here for a second. The wall was wanting to go crooked on me. Let's smooth out this glue. 
And as this dries, I'm gonna put it aside before we add our texturing effect. And we can start to kinda of work on this. I'm just gonna back you on out just a, just a hair. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> All right, so let's start with this big guy right here. And I'm gonna put him right there. So. really likes the PVC that glues on there pretty well wow I was thinking of like sanding it to scuff it up a little bit because I thought maybe it might be too smooth but is on there <laughs> it's on there pretty good there's our little hut maybe it's an alchemy lab you know so this is the main alchemy lab and then we have the sleeping quarters which we're going to work on next and for this it's probably easier I don't want to smush our alchemy lab. We're going to get some explosions going on. So for this, maybe I'll go over here uh, with you guys and we can uh, work on, on this guy here. And where'd he go? Right here. And get some glue going on this guy. I might be a little bit more liberal with my glue. And let's get him on as straight as we can. And I might cheat and kind of turn it towards me a little bit just to see what's going on. And then I'll be sure to show you guys. Okay, is it straight? Oh, it's definitely not straight. This hut is crooked. There. I'll just hold it until it sets up a little bit. There we go. We're getting our huts. Look, it looks exactly like that one. Not at all. <laughs> Not yet. You know, we're, we're getting there. You know, the, the, the objective is to get there. We're going to get our main structures done, you know, and then we can uh, stone it up later. And my idea here is to use fatter stones and then start thinning out the stones, you know, making them thin, 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 thin to give the illusion that our tower is getting thinner. You know, we'll see how that works. And then, of course, here we're going to fatten it up. And between our windows here, which I know is like super confusing because where I have them drawn is not at all where I cut them. Yeah, that's, that's uh, tough. Oh, that's creepy. Where's my eye? Blink, blink. That's creepy. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. So let's add his little entrance uh, doorway here. And then we can start with some of the woodifying of our structure, you know, or maybe we can start working up here and trying to figure out how we're gonna do these archways. Uh, that, that'll that be a, a little bit interesting. I think it'll be a little complex, so we'll, we'll figure it out. So where did our, our entrance way go? Our grand entrance, here it is. So first, let's get him a bit more textured before we move on, and that's that's pretty secure right there. And let me see if I can remove a little bit of this black backing because it doesn't really show texture all that well. There we go. It's not as malleable <laughs> as the rest of the phone. So I'm gonna go in with our, our foil first on all the sides and then I'll come back and do the, the little, although the foil itself already looks pretty good. I think if we get kind of our main landmarks in, it's going to make it a lot easier to stone it up uh, once we're done. Because we'll have a much better idea of how many stone pieces we need, all that. So that's why I thought maybe doing it this way would be better. And I thought this would probably be the more fun part of the build, is making these little huts, rather than watch me cut out a hundred foam bricks. Yeah. <laughs> But I went ahead and cut some already and started to texturize them. There we go. Let me just pull this little 
scraggler piece and let's get him glued up right there. And I'm going to use a liberal amount of glue. Very liberal. Ooh, so liberal it went on my hand. All right. I'm just totally cheating and turning him. Actually, I might be able to put this down. Yeah, he's in a position where I could totally do that. Is he straight? No, that's a crooked entrance. No wonder this wizard likes to drink too much of his own mead before he does his uh, home improvement jobs. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Got wrapped up in the, uh, the, the cord there for our glue gun. But yeah, so we got our little huts, our little alchemy lab. That's what I decide to call it. Here's his uh, bedroom quarters. You know, wizard's got to sleep after a busy day of casting spells. And his entrance, you know, which is uh, magical. It only appears for his friends. So next, let's see here. Probably the next thing we should try and do is build up this... Maybe this situation up here or this situation down here, which we want to build up really thick because this is going to be our base. Uh, and then we're going to move on up. And I'm thinking before I put on those wooden sticks at the bottom, they almost look like they're going into the stone. So I'm wondering if I want to lay the stone on first and then jab them into the stone or you know what, probably the sticks first and then build the stones right up to the sticks so it looks like the sticks are coming out of the stone. Probably the better idea. So I'll start with this larger hut here as a test and see how that goes. And so here I have my various sized popsicle sticks. And I think I'm gonna stick with this, these big jobbers right here. And the idea is to just start to kind of break them up so looking at my canister here, I can get an idea of, you know, I'll start maybe with this middle one here. And we want him to be, let's see how the picture is. Yep, they go, they go out past our hut. So we definitely want ours to go past the hut as well. So let's start, but not too much past, not too much, like right around there. So I'm gonna move this guy out of the way and like right about there. So I'm gonna put a couple, a couple marks like that. And then I'm gonna try and break it. And the idea is that it'll just leave us some cool edges that we can then paint, paint up. And so I'm gonna do one more. About that size and with him, I'm actually gonna break them in two, like this. So let me put in kind of a guide score, score it up, and then just break it like that. So now we have some nice little boards, and let's see if I can just kind of create some broken, like, earthy, you know, type of looks. Or, you know, even if it's kind of like that a little bit, you know, just kind of keep it as if it's seen better days, you know? So let's start gluing him to the bottom of our little guy here. And let me figure out the best way. I think I can lay him like this because I have strategically placed these so, so I can lay him in a way. And I'm gonna glue just like that. So let me start with putting some glue on the very end of this guy and right here. I'll just back a little bit there.
Now, of course, these sticks aren't doing anything structural to our, our piece, so they don't really need much glue to stick in place. I mean, this is, this is awesome, you know, just, they're just decor. And here's my other little, my other little shard. And I'm just picking at the ends a little bit just to kind of break up the, the little splinters, I should say. Create little splintered edges. And viewer bot is here on Twitch. Hey, hey back. We're making a very cool wizard castle. And on the very top of the wizard castle will be a plasma uh, light bulb that we made ourselves out of a regular light bulb by sending a lot of high voltage through it. And then we're going to create a wizard versus dragon battle scene. And this is going to sit here as, as our lamp. So I just got a little bit of glue. Now let's see how that is looking. All right. So we have some kind of barbs going on here. And we can use tin snips or scissors to kind of cut the ends. So I'm just going to lean this on me. And I notice how on this board right here, it seems pretty sharply cut, you know, like I exacto knifed it, which is not what we want. So let me just do a couple more cuts. And one of the pieces actually fell off. So that's going to help our cause a bit. And let me just break up the, I know you guys can't see any of this, but breaking up some of these tips. There we go. So that's going to make it look, see, look how it's scraggly on the ends. Like these boards have seen better days. So a couple more boards just like this. And I'm just going to use the Rachel way of measuring, which is basically just, you know, hold the thing against the thing. And we're going to do this one about here. You can even go like, you know, make it a little more diagonal. All right, and I believe there's kind of already a score going down the middle, so I'm just gonna accentuate it. And normally we don't want popsicle sticks to break uh, for our projects, but this time we do. So I'm just gonna score the edges here. And that'll allow me to a little bit better scraggle up these ends. And also give them a better appearance if I hold it close if it ever focuses on it we'll go like that no it's like no I want to focus on the project below there we go see how those ends look all scraggly and so those are gonna be poking out you know from underneath and so you could just take a, an exacto knife preferably one that's kind of blunt and you know not the sharpest tool in the shed and uh, use it that way it's also great for enhancing wood technique or wood texture because you would think the popsicle sticks are wood, right? They got wood grain, but the wood grain is so smooth that when you go paint it, there's no raised edges for different colors to grab onto. Uh, so this is great when you do like a, you know, an, an acrylic wash, starting with something very dark that goes into the crevices and then you dry brush a lighter wood color. Looks really great. It looks very 3D. Um, otherwise it looks very 2D. So this is something I didn't do with the others, but they don't poke out very much and I can probably hit them up later, but I'm just gonna break a couple of these ends and then use kind of the sideways of the hobby knife like that. Just create some kind of ups and downs. There we go. So that's looking pretty good right there. Nice scraggly little end. So I'm gonna hot glue him as well down here. A little bit of glue here and a little bit of glue there. Glue, glue, everywhere glue, glue. There we go, we are getting some boards. And I'll turn this around. Actually, I should probably be doing it this way. So much easier. 
getting some boards going here and obviously none of this will be seen so doesn't really matter it's just these guys poking out here uh, that will be seen you know kind of like that uh, and of course this will have a roof so we won't see that hideousness down there but we'll just kind of do him like that and continue on do I have any oh yep I have another piece right here that we can work on so I'm gonna move him out of the way so the camera doesn't want to just focus on him and scraggle up our ends here nice splinters to the other side just to kind of weaken this side a little bit making it easier for us to just fray up that end is all we really want to do. I'm just using my nails to fray it up and there you go. You get like a nice little frayed broomstick end. You know, like a, it's been hit by something. So let me bring this guy over here. And where are we gonna put this guy? He can go kind of like here since he's shorter. We'll just gap him there. There we go. Got some boards going. I think we need what? One more? One more board? Let's see how long we need this board to be. like here -ish. maybe a little bit more break this section off here wow this looks really good that piece looks awesome oh we definitely have to go with that piece so let me score him in half I'm going to score this one even more in half. And I like keeping all these like little pieces. They're they're great. And in fact, I'm going to put him facing. Oh no, where'd he go? He fell in. He fell in the hole. Put him like that. Oh, that might be the only one we need. Which side is better? This side. Make sure it's facing down so it shows. There we go. I'm just going to put two more on either end here. There we go. It's a little bit better for you guys. One over here and one over here. And I cut out two minis. Two little minis. And he'll happily go on there. So I'm just turning him such that I can see him. I'm going to put him here and which side is up and we're gonna do this side up so I'm gonna put some glue on here and one more camera always wants to focus on the thing that is closest to it which is this thing up here which kind of sucks but let's see so this one didn't shard up as well so I'm gonna help it along and do the other side Just kind of butterfly it out just a little bit like that. It looks like a witch's broom, uh, but it looks pretty cool. 
and I'm going to do the same thing. Dab a little glue there. And then our cross beams that I'm going to go out and get should help then hold these things kind of in place. You know, although they're decorative, they're not really structural, but we don't want any of them just kind of like falling off. So I'm gonna let that set just a little bit and we're gonna move on and, and literally do the same thing on, on this guy. Or maybe today we'll finish one hut and then I can just repeat on the other hut, you know, on my own. So Dave Beck hears Ripley and she is crying because the other dog is uh, outside being taken for his, um, for his walk, you know, and his bidness. And she's super jealous. So, and so she'll bark and be all upset about that whole thing. So, uh, because she wants all of the attention. Looking good, people. All right, so I think that's dry enough for me to turn it around. Looking good. Bring it up closer to you guys, yeah. Once that's painted up, it's gonna look super real. So let's do the pieces that go on the sides and then we can do the crossbar pieces. So, you know, basically the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and just very lightly with a pencil because I don't like to use the Sharpie on the wood because if we're gonna do more ink washing rather than painting, and by ink washing, I mean acrylic washing, you can actually see the Sharpie through it. And I made that mistake before. So I learned my lesson and I have a couple pieces of, you know what, this might be a better option for this but it is pretty thick. I like these. These are like really cheap, thin popsicles, which is perfect for a project like this because it's much easier to create these like little broken ends like that. So I'm just gonna use a pencil to kind of mark out, it needs to be kind of this high. And go on my pencil mark there. Let's see, I might be able to get three, three sticks out of this one. Oh, it needs, it needs a little more help. There we go. Yeah, I think if I might be able to get three of them cutting longitudinally. And I think for this one, I'm actually gonna stand so I can like see and my head might get all up in your guys' way. But I'm gonna try and cut as straight as possible because I think I think one like this might be a little too fat. You know what, we'll try it. We'll try one that's like this. Perfectly straight line. <laughs> Give it another one and a third. Three times a charm. And let's break it off and see how that looks. That's actually a nice thickness. Yeah, so we'll do the, the three. there and let me see how the top of our is there any wood going up at the top there it looks like it yes there is so this one has to be slightly shorter I cut him slightly too long I mean just a hair really you know what I'm gonna leave it because I can put a cross piece of wood right here and it won't obliterate the window. If I make it any shorter, then it's gonna start encroaching on the top of that window. So I changed my mind. I'm gonna keep it like this. And I think probably the better way to do this is like this. So let's see, I'm going to just glue up this side here and put, I believe this is the, the end we cut this little guy here. Oh no, he's crooked. Let me pull him off. The alchemy lab cannot be crooked. That's probably the most important part of our castle here. Okay, now as the glue is getting to be, uh, you know, a little bit soft, but a little bit hardening up, I like to go and just kind of remove anything that's poking out, you know, or kind of just drive it back in the crevice. So when we paint, 
it is so obvious when you paint on top of hot glue. It's like very obvious. The paint is like, oh, hello, hot glue. And it don't look too good. So let's just get rid of some of that. And I'm just using this to kind of push it back in the crevice. There we go. So it ends up looking more like mortar, you know, rather than, oh, there's a giant gob of hot glue. You screwed that up type of look. So I'm gonna do the same thing here and I'm gonna try and slit these two in half. So since it worked out so great the first time, I'm going to, you know, put some leverage into it. So let me get the glue off of here. There we go. It's a blunt blade, so it's not super dangerous to handle. Although they say blunt blades are often worse than sharp blades. Oh, I got that pretty straight. Let's give it another score. And the third one. And I'm going to leave these little, you know, these little splinter pieces. They're kind of cool looking. You know, I can always pull them off later, but they might enhance our build. And so this time I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to be working on this guy right here. There we go. I think I can still see. <laughs> Maybe I'll just put a tiny bit of glue on this guy instead of going nuts like I did last time so I don't have to sit there tucking glue into the seams. And let's push this guy. Oh, push this guy up a little bit to meet meet the other one. glue didn't really take all that well. Try again. I'm just combing over some uh, excess glue. There we go. Looking good people. So as you can see, our nasty seams are being completely covered up by these nice little wood panes. Yeah, love it when you don't have to be all that crazy, you know, with the seams. Uh, other times, if you're just relying on the seams, it's a lot of whoops, you know, and cutting it over and over to get that, that angle just right so the two ends meet up. So I'm going to do the same thing. We got one more guy left here, and I'm going to put him on here just like that and at, by now I might be able to lay him down. Yes, and maybe get him like that. There we go. Okay, our Ripley is not happy. All right, we got another one. And I don't think we have another one, so I gotta cut up another one. And let's start by getting rid of this round end here. I like that break that looks pretty cool I think I'm gonna put this on the outside so let's see what the something about like a little slightly taller like here here ish But yeah, I mean, it's it's sometimes unbelievable the super simple materials that you need to build something just very, very cool. So it doesn't take much. You can build towers out of red solo cups or little plastic drinking cups, cardboard. I didn't even stand up 
for this one. I heard a nice crack, so that came apart pretty easily. And I might as well prep a couple others because these will be cut shorter, but might as well make our lives a little bit easier for when I get to that. But I figure we'll do an example hut and I can just repeat it on my own on this side. And we're going to build the roofs and things very similarly to how we did the Frankenstein castle build. A lot of similar techniques there. So that should be pretty familiar to, to all of us. And I'm just going to That is like that. Gonna slide it up a bit and use my knife. Kind of get rid of some of this and tuck it in. Now it is sticking up over here, but I don't think I'm going to put any hot glue because it's just going to and as long as it's kind of held in place pretty well here, I am not going to worry too much about uh, down here. That way it doesn't. And the only thing I am going to do, noticing now that we have our sticks and you can see it in, in this view, is that I think we need an extra plank here. And I think we need an extra plank here because the building kind of goes over, you know, our platform. So um, since we got some extra sticks, might as well. And that's actually looking pretty good just like that. I don't think I even have to, to cut it. So I think what I'm going to do is do just like this, like we talked about. And I like this end. glue here and put some glue on its end a whole bunch of glue and rest it and I'll put a dab of glue kind of where I suspect I'm gonna put my you know my support beams, one here and one here. Just so it's ready. Just to kind of hold that guy because he doesn't have much to hold on to. So he'll stay there. And then we'll use the other piece and let me just uh, get him a little bit more mangled looking. The other one looked pretty, pretty well mangled, but this guy not so much. Do the same thing although he's a little bit he's a little bit long much better so same deal I'm going to not much going on here to stick on to but I'll be sure to really glue up this end because it's gonna be hidden by the stones so in fact this was the way to do it get this guy get these sticks all going that way all this hideous glue right here is going to be covered up by our stonework so I'm not too worried and I'm going to try and match dots where I had them before and we got a whole lot of uh, hot glue string going on all the wispies well there guys we got a nice platform and I'm gonna go out and get the square you know four by fours if you will uh, to put them here so we have a couple different shapes of wood and let's finish up adding some of the wood detail around you know there's a border here there's a border that goes below the window and a border up here 
uh, when you guys totally didn't see any of that. But yeah, we're going to add our border down here if it has one. I don't recall. But it definitely has a border in the middle here uh, across our window. So we're going to add that and we're going to add our top border as well. So Dave Beck saying, you'd never find boards not mangled at Wizard Depot. That's true. That's where I'm going to shop. I'm going to shop at Wizard Depot. And, uh, you know, that's where uh, Wizard Designer Rachel gets all her, her clients their things at the Wizard Dollar Store and the Wizard Depot. Indeed. So we have a nice, you know, convincing little little hut going let's see what the woodwork looks like now I cannot tell if there's wood trim on the bottom um, I probably won't add any because what I'd like to do instead is add dirt in there you know and, and add some earthy elements which is going to totally cover our wood anyway so I'm going to bypass and only add the wood beams here to the underneath window wood beams. That's what we'll call them. We'll add the wood beams there and then we'll add one up top and that will be our wood beamage uh, for this. And I'm literally gonna repeat what we did here uh, during the week on this side. So we all know how that goes. So I can definitely get that done. And then the way we created our, um, our you know, little platform here might be a cool way, uh, but cutting the pieces of wood much thinner strips to create our roof and make our roof look kind of dilapidated because I think this roof had shingles. Yeah, so it's like a shingle roof. The other roofs are shingles as well. Um, I may go with the shingles roof. I like to always create a wood rustic framework on the bottom because in that case, uh, if some of the shingles are missing, you got that wood support and it looks really, really cool. So I do create like a teepee made of toothpicks and or popsicle sticks. And then I shingle over that. Uh, but I do like the, the wood. I might actually cut up some of this cheaper popsicle stick into little rectangles. And maybe we could do like a wood shingle type roof. That might, that might look neat. That might look neat. So let's see. Let me measure out... I like what I did. So I'm going to go ahead and cut three pieces uh, from this wood first. And then we can, uh, it's much easier than trying to measure, you know, with this thing like that. And let me get this rounded butt off of here. And what I'll probably do is pack in like little coffee grounds or dirt, literal dirt from outside into the seams here to make it look a little bit dirty. And then you can just water down that soil, that dirt. It's great for painting just stucco that needs to be power washed. So we can literally use dirt or coffee grounds. Coffee grounds stain the water really, really well. And you can get just that wash that you need without having to use any paint. I, I've actually painted miniatures with food uh, products before and, and uh, they smell really good oh yeah they do so let's see here each one of these is going to be about the same size and there's not a really good way to to show you guys this but I'm gonna go ahead and mark off where I think it should be and we can make fine adjustments later so you can see my pen mark there and let me move some of this stuff out out the way out the way like this purple foam we're not going to be needing our light bulb and my eyeballs I'll keep those so where were we we were with this guy and we're going to try and cut our three panes again our three little planks I should say so once you get going it's actually pretty easy to cut in a straight line just got to get it going one and I'm going to keep the little splinters that come off of it because I think they look cool we're going to be using a whole bunch of like cool new techniques with this foam castle build and the dragon for now we're going to attempt to make a clay dragon uh, and it all goes wrong and the dragon looks like really bad in comparison to everything we have going on then we'll just you know and we'll Oh, I forgot to cut it. So let me cut it here. I see the pencil mark right there. I got into cutting the little three things. So if this clay dragon of mine looks really bad, we're gonna create a 
wire armature, cover it in tin foil, like the main body parts, and then we're going to cover the surface in clay and give it, mold the clay, give it all its shapes. Oh, that's like pretty good, guys. Look at that. It's a little crooked, but it's good. So I'm going to, let's see, how will I do this? Maybe I'll face it towards you guys like that. And then I'll come around. I'll come around. Um, so if our, our dragon, our clay dragon, ends up looking really bad, then, you know, I'll just bag it. And we can try a foam dragon, which, you know, obviously this is something that, you know, we're all much more familiar with, um, more comfortable working with. But I always like to throw in a new skill with every project, you know, or else it just gets to be the same thing and you never improve, right? So it's fine to take a, a face plant once in a while, you know, and you learn from your mistakes, either try it again or move on. So I'm looking forward to trying our clay dragon and molding clay. That, that sounds like fun. Uh, and if not, say it, it totally fails and it looks really bad, then uh, I'll just try it out of foam. Worst case scenario, say we really, like I really cannot create dragons, then we can always try and find one that is pre-bought. Like we could just buy one, you know, and maybe modify it or, you know, something like that. I'm sure I can find some kind of dragon figure that we can buy. But that'll be our last case scenario. We are going to try our bestest to make ours out of clay. And what I would like to do is put in some red LEDs for its eyes, you know, like little maybe three millimeter LEDs. And I think that would look cool. Now, the only challenge is that you have to bake this contraption in the oven. Now, I know some people have literally baked their contraption with LEDs in the oven because it doesn't require super high temperatures and the LEDs actually survive it uh, because you need to run all the wires beforehand through the dragon. Once that clay is baked, now you're having to drill into your clay thing and that's, you know, that's just gonna destroy it. So you do have to put that kind of stuff in beforehand, which is interesting. And I'm just making sure that this is straight because I'm trying to build towards you guys, but also trying to see what the heck it is I'm doing, yeah. So that's, that's looking pretty straight. I love it when you start putting in these details, it starts looking good because I'm not gonna lie, you know, that octagon turned hexagon there for a bit, wasn't looking too good, you know? Just uh, wasn't looking too good. I know when, when my stuff doesn't look good, I admit it. Uh, but once you start to like put in the little details, it just starts to turn around. It starts to look really, really good. So I'm super excited. Once you guys started talking about like orbs and dragons and fantasy, I was like, oh, this is turning into a fantasy build. And I was super excited. I was like, yeah, you guys are my people. Coming up with all the good ideas. All right, so let's see. I wanna, now I can do it where you guys can see. Lean this guy. Actually, I'm gonna. Oh no, he's slightly long, but I'm gonna try and tuck him inside. There we go. It's looking pretty straight, right? Yeah. That looks good. And we got two more to go. So let's get them done. And I'm just going to measure like I did before and it's a little bit easier. And this thing is facing me. Now you'll notice I love the broken ends. So I always make sure to use them anytime, you know, they're here. I leave them exposed. Uh, that just adds to the real, to the realism, you know, adds to the real. <laughs> so let's see here, get this cut up. Oh no, he's slightly too long but let's see if I can tuck them in. No, I cannot. So I've got both ends with some very cool looking shards. So maybe if I break this up a little bit and kind of cut it at an angle, I might be able to fit it. Break off these little tips. Might be more malleable where it fits inside. Let's see. 
Yes, now it does. Now it fits. It's like, oh, that hot glue gun is going right in between the fingers. Yikes. Steady hands. Steady hands, people. All right, that's looking pretty good. And Dave, uh, Beck is saying, they are wizard straight. Yes, I concur. They are wizard level straight. And we just got one more to go. So let's see. I got enough, uh, got enough little pieces here. And I'm just going to sit and measure this guy. And he's about here. And we have plenty of flock from the last time. And I really thought about this lamp. I figured if we were building a clay dragon, I could just make the whole lamp out of clay. Like put clay on top of the PVC and all that and mold the clay and all that. Um, but I don't know. I think like you can get more... You, you can get equal amount of detail with both, let's face it, you know. But I think we could, uh, the foam, once you paint it, or once you Mod Podge it, you know, seal it all up, all up, it gets pretty strong, you know. Obviously, once the clay goes through the whole process of uh, uh, being baked, that is super strong, you know, which means we'd have to bake our, our whole PVC pipe, which I think it would last. I think our PVC pipe would be fine. There we go. I'm just adding a couple striations and lines. And let's get this guy on here. And I think this time, to make my life easy, I'll put a stripe. Very little stripe. And, oh no, where'd it go? Oh my gosh, is this it? This looks kind of it, guys. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Nice. And I kept that little broken end to this side rather than putting it against the, the canister here because it's just going to get covered up by rocks. So that's looking pretty good there. Now the only thing that I want to do that I should have done before, and I'm going to leave this kind of laying like this, is just with the X-Acto knife. I made a couple, but I'm just going to score it because, oops, I scored the stucco. <laughs> Uh, because when we add our nice paint effects, this is really going to stand out. So I'm going to add just some scoring to these guys, and I'll come back and score the rest. But I wanted to make sure we don't forget that step, and I know I'll come back and look at it later and notice some of the boards are scored and some of them are not, and that'll remind me to do the rest of them. So really, the only other thing that we have to do is up here are, you know, just kind of a border, uh, and it's basically repeating what we just did down here, but that's going to prep for our roof uh, situation. So taking some of the... Kind of final ones that I have. Let's see, that's about right there. And I'm going to cut him. And these are not really going to be seen too much, so I'm not too worried about how they look. So I'm going to just put him in. And then I'm going to use glue against the back of it just to kind of, actually, maybe I'll just kind of put glue here first. Make my life easy. And then put him in. And he's going to be sitting vertical or, you know, upright rather than laying flat. You know, like that. I almost smooshed my door. I heard it. I smooshed it. Where is it? Oh, oh, it's under here. I can't smush my door. All right. So we got one beam. Just a few others to go. And I might as well use this piece right here. And I'm going to cut its curved little bum off. You can also use scissors to cut these, but... They always go flying, you know, and then you got to look, you know, find the other piece. 
It's always a pain. So I'm just gonna do the three per popsicle stick because that ended up working really well. So being just the right width. Sometimes it's weird when you gotta do funky widths, you know, and then you burn through a lot of popsicle sticks to, to do it. All right. Now you can either score these to create really great wood texture on top of wood. You would think the wood would have good wood texture, but not with popsicle sticks. They're way too smooth. You can score it just like I did, or you can take hot glue and a paintbrush that you do not care about at all, and you just paint over it with a little bit, little bit of hot glue. Don't go nuts on the hot glue. And that gives you just kind of the raised bumps that you need that makes it look like wood that when you paint it later looks way more, uh, you know, way more real. So that's how that's looking. Kind of a awkward, you know, shot, but that's what we got. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut him here. Oh, too soon, Junior. Looking good. I don't want to get any glue on my beautiful stucco. My stucco work. And got this guy and then we got one more and we are totally, at least for now, done this hut because I need to keep the, the top open and we can wire it up uh, next time because I'm pretty much going to just continue, basically repeat what I did on this hut to the other hut and very relatively the same thing that we just did to the entrance as well. We're just going to border it with these little wooden sticks. So it's gonna be very, very similar. But I wanted to make sure that the huts worked, the dimensions looked right, you know. They may not be proportionately accurate, but they work artistically, you know, like for, for the eyeball. So I just wanted to make sure that that was the case. And I'm gonna cut up another one. Ooh, this one's already breaking. Why, thank you, you will be my victim. So, let me just cut you in half. And sometimes I like to work with the larger popsicle sticks and trim them down this way because you do get a lot of the natural fraying uh, that you see with the wood. So rather than buying the skinny coffee stir sticks, uh, the only advantage there is the coffee stir sticks are slightly more thin than this. So they're even easier to cut. They're a little easier to bend, but not all the way like an arch window. That's really tough. That I usually handle with foam. But one thing I haven't tried, guys, is putting the popsicle stick in water, like say overnight or for a while to soften it up and see if I can bend it that way. That's something I haven't done. So... Basically, maybe I can, yes, now I can lay this guy. And I'm gonna do that. And right about there. A wizard hut done. just a little bit too big. I'm gonna mash it in 
mash. There we go. When in doubt, just mash it in. All right, so we have our wizard uh, alchemy lab done, except for our two by four, four by fours that are gonna go here. You know, I'm gonna run out and get those, but I really like the, the little platform that it's sitting on. I think it looks pretty good there. And the windows are, heck, pretty darn even for someone like me. So yeah, they, they look pretty good. I like the stucco texture. I think that's gonna be painted up real nice. So everything that we did here, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat on here and repeat on here, you know, and this is gonna be very easy because it's only got three walls. So that's awesome. Very, very easy to do. Uh, and then I will probably, I'm thinking about maybe doing wood shingles on all those guys that's gonna take really long so i'm gonna spare you uh, i'll cut up all the shingles and and get that all you know ready we can do like a separate shingles night where we do like one roof just one roof and then um i want to get this thing wired before we get too too far into the build like stoning everything because we're gonna have to handle a lot of things and all that. So I'm thinking next week, now that we have our huts done and we know exactly where we wanna put our LEDs, one of the things I never like to do is when lighting up something like this, put the LED in a straight line of sight with the window. You know, meaning like where you can see my finger or back here on the wall where you can see my finger. Because when you look at the piece, it's like, yee, you know, you get blinded with that LED light. So I always like to hide it, you know, maybe somewhere in here in the back wall. That way, I mean, you might catch a glimpse of it, but you, you know, you won't really see the actual LED and you can focus more on the ambiance light that it'll provide versus like seeing these sharp LEDs. So we might put one or two in here, uh, one in here. And then I might put three in here, just kind of lighting through these. Uh, and so let's get the wiring done because it's gonna be helpful to be able to hot glue directly to the PVC pipe versus gluing it to the stones. It's, you know, it's just not, not as good. So we'll do that and give us some wire slack as well in here so that way if I ever have to repair an LED I have extra lead that I can you know use it's tough when like the LED is hot glued and there's no lead so you cut your LED and it needs to be replaced for whatever reason but you can't get in there you know so I like to bunch a bunch of uh uh, wire like the bunch of bunch of wire in here just so I continuously have extra and I have extra to be able to solder extra you know lead uh, I learned that the hard way you know something happened with the LED or a connection just kind of came off or came loose and uh, it was kind of tough to fix so same thing with here I like to leave a lot of extra and one strategy for the top that we'll work on for next time and let's see if I can give you guys a much better view up here Actually, this is probably a better view. You know, somehow get this guy on here. And I was thinking, easy, right? Put hot glue, done. But wait a minute, wait a minute. What if I'm going to connect our high voltage line really tight on here and I'm going to insulate the holy moly out of it because I don't want it interfering with the LEDs. I don't want any arc over going on. So we're gonna try and really insulate this. But what if for whatever reason it gets loose? Now this is hot glue gun. You know, of course you can take a heat gun to it and remove it, but heat gun and foam don't work really well, you know? So what I think I'm gonna do is cut out a piece of wood that is the exact same diameter as this, right? And check this out. So I had this idea. Let's see if it's if it's gonna work, right? Let me back, I'm gonna have to back you guys out for this because this idea is so epic. You gotta like stand back, stand back people. Uh, so look at these holes, right? I mean, it almost seems like we could use screws and latch this just like you would and say something happens with the connection. I'll glue the piece of wood on here, but with this, it'll be latched on with these screws. So I can go like that and remove it and then lock it. But here's the problem. It's kind of tight. Like I couldn't get this in a position where I'm getting obstruction. But what if I cut out these inside in the middle, these guys right here? That should fit. 
and we could test it by putting kind of it in the bottom there. So let's see if we can get a view. See, I see them. I think I see them both. And I'm, we might be able to get away with it. And that'll allow us, and of course, I'll leave extra lead in here for a high voltage. And so that's going to allow us to like, boop, oh, there's a problem. Fix, 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 latch it back in place. And, you know, our light bulb will be up here and our uh, rook situation won't get in the middle of it. It'll be separate. It's not going to be glued. Nothing's going to be glued directly onto this except a flock, uh, perhaps some decor, you know, to kind of disguise the fact that it's a light bulb holder. But, you know, we'll definitely leave these these uh, slider area uh, without dirt or anything like that. So we can just unscrew it that way. So I'm, I'm trying to think ahead, you know, for all these things. And uh, David Beck said, I bought a bunch of flickering LEDs. I'll be ready. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I can't wait. So this is going to be my first time wiring up flickering LEDs. Um, I'm going to imagine it's like wiring up any other LEDs, resistor, LED, and it flickers its own self. So if that's not the case, please chime in, you know, especially on Discord. And I know not all of you guys are on Discord yet. So definitely, um, if you're watching on, on Twitch, hit that panel. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the link. Uh, there's also links on the website. And again, if you get on there and you can't access any of the Wrench Army stuff, uh, please do message me. I'll try and help hook your account up. You know, there's guides for all that. It should walk you through, but you never know. Sometimes technology can be pesky, right? So guys, I don't know about you, but I had a ton of fun and I'm very excited about how this is going. And when we come back, You'll see this hutted up, you know, with wood, and you will see this guy ready to go with wood, no roofs yet, and we're going to get all of our wiring done, especially before completing such, this is the most complex part right here. And so we definitely want our wires hot glued, ready to go before we get this done, because we're going to destroy a lot of foam trying to do that, uh, and, you know, it's a we don't want to destroy our foam. And then after that, we'll complete this and then work on our dragon armature. Ooh, so exciting. So first of all, thank you guys so much for being Wrench Army members because really, and I know I say this like a broken robot, but it really is your support that, you know, allows me all my items, all this stuff, and for us to really push our imagination and our ideas. And that keeps me excited. And hopefully that keeps you guys excited. And I love to hear your ideas. So yes, please do get on Discord. Some of you like to message me through social media. You can still continue to do that. I'm a little slow on social media because there's so much spam, you know, and all that. So uh, definitely, you know, still hit me up there, hit me on Discord and contribute your ideas. Definitely get onto the Wrench Army chat board and post pictures, you know, nobody will say, hey, that's a bad idea. It gets us all thinking. So thanks again, guys. And ooh, until next time, oh, prepare yourself for battle. It's wizard versus dragon. Who's gonna win? Chime in. And Dave Beck says, much awesomeness. Have a great week and weekend to all of you guys too.